When speaking about the devastating impacts of climate change, Bangladesh is a common example. Characterized by its coastal deltas, Bangladesh faces some of the worst impacts of rising sea levels, with the country recently experiencing the worst floods in decades. But what is not heard as often is that Bangladesh is one of the most resilient countries in the face of climate change. To name a few reasons why, Bangladesh has an effective cyclone early warning system. Local people are showing creativity and perseverance to manage their crops and their water. The government, local citizens, companies and organisations are working hard to address climate change to make sure life goes on despite severe climate change impacts. Bangladesh must work to feed its increasing population as agricultural land diminishes, as well as facing threats posed by the climate crisis. How do local people deal with these challenges? And what can we learn from them? We visited some communities in different regions across the country to better understand their needs and discover what solutions they would like to see. The Sundarbans is a proud part of Bangladesh's natural heritage. UNESCO has declared this forest as a World Heritage Site, undertaking to protect its unique ecology and the wide range of wildlife that lives there. The Sundarbans is of universal importance to Bangladesh and to the world. Thousands of fishermen like Abdul Alim and Asfa Ali caught fish in the Sundarbans. The forest is the only source of their livelihood. But the climate is changing rapidly. Coastal residents are seeing the reality of this before their very eyes. Livelihoods, houses, fish farms and agricultural lands are all in danger. The people here know that they cannot fight the forces of nature, but the Sundarbans protect them by standing as a shield in front of the tidal waves, sheltering communities during repeated cyclones. The importance of the Sundarbans for Bangladesh cannot be overstated. However, there are no structures in place to oversee the maintenance of this precious resource. On the contrary, the forest is suffering, sometimes in the name of development, sometimes through the vested interests of various individuals or groups. The Sundarbans is being brought to the brink of destruction by the building of factories nearby, by shrimp farming processes, deforestation and housing developments. Experts say that by 2050, 30% of the coast will be submerged in salt water. The number of natural disasters will increase, as will their severity. The people of 14 coastal districts, that is a quarter of the country, will lose their homes, livelihoods, and in some cases, their lives. At one time, the forest area in Bangladesh alone was 10,000 square kilometers. Now it stands at less than half that, Including the Indian Sundarbans, it totals a mere 6,000 square kilometers. The danger of the damage to the Sundarbans cannot be seen from the outside. However, the residents of this coast are aware of it. Community empowerment. Especially, CMC revenue sharing is also a part of it. So, it is important that the Sundarbans is dependent on the communities. So, it is important that the livelihood of the Sundarbans is also a part of it. In the last few years, the Sundarbans has played a role in saving the lives and property of millions of people by stopping the cyclones Sidr, Mahazan, Amphan, Bulbul, and lastly Yas. Without the Sundarbans, the lives and resources of millions of people on the coast are at the mercy of the increasingly ferocious cyclones and the devastation they bring.
most farmers in the Delta still depend on traditional farming practices and decision-making. While information and technology could potentially help farmers, they don't have access to tailored weather and climate information services that could help them anticipate and mitigate the effects of the unpredictable weather. As a result, when Mother Nature strikes unexpectedly, farmers often lose their crops, livestock and livelihoods. The Water Apps project has co-developed weather and climate information services with farmers and local stakeholders in Bangladesh. The Water Apps project trained local extension officers, farmers and young people on weather and climate information services and how to use them for climate sensitive decision making. From Water Apps, the local farmers in Kolna receive 7-day, 14-day and seasonal forecasts which help farmers plan ahead in their households and farming activities. Local farmers report that improved climate information and up-to-the-minute warnings about extreme weather events has saved crops that might otherwise have been destroyed. Farmers getting help from the app have improved their traditional decision making and livelihood practices. Farmers are now making informed choices about when and what to plant and harvest. This simple tool is helping farmers to promote sustainable agriculture and adapt to the dramatic changes brought about by the climate emergency in the Bangladesh Delta. Now we move from the countryside to the urban heart of Bangladesh to see how water affects the people who live there. Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh. 20 million people live here in what is one of the most populous cities in the world. Unplanned urbanization means that the city struggles to accommodate its thriving inhabitants. The civic amenities are inadequate and the roads are too narrow for the multitudes of people who travel daily. The drainage system is poor and choked with rubbish. Rivers and canals have been filled in, the land taken illegally, and buildings spring up without proper planning. It only takes a little rain for the city streets to be submerged in water. In the continuous rains of the monsoon season, the city turns into an ocean with roads disappearing under several feet of water. Flooding has become an ongoing problem during monsoon, making life extremely difficult for city dwellers. <laughs> The drainage channels in the city are clogged with garbage and struggle to carry away the waste water. With nowhere to go, the water flows up through the drains and onto the streets. Floods have become a feature of daily life, affecting people's health, education, the economy and the environment. But there are solutions. The government should revive the natural waterways, excavating the rivers and canals. The drains can be cleaned, box culverts unblocked and new ones constructed. This will allow for the free flow of rainwater. 
More pump houses are needed to siphon off excess water when the city becomes inundated. But it requires the Dhaka City Corporation and the Water Supply and Sewage Authority to work together to coordinate development. It is time to create a comprehensive plan that enables this vibrant city and its 20 million inhabitants to thrive. With proper management, we can control the water and make scenes like these a thing of the past. People in the hilly regions of Bangladesh have a daily struggle to access safe water. They depend on natural resources like wells and waterfalls. But in the current climate emergency, those resources are running dry. Most people are dependent on natural water for drinking and household work. But getting water is not as easy as it once was. Every morning starts with a journey for water. Earlier, water was available within a kilometre of the house. But now those water sources have dried up, resulting in a walk of over three kilometres. The effect of this crisis is felt across the entire region, with women bearing most of the responsibility for hauling water. Earlier, there were small fountains in the area, but now they must trudge many kilometers per day to get water for their households. Their misery lasts until the rains come. Kagratchari Public Health Engineering Department has said that they are working on solutions for this water emergency. Work is underway to install 34 deep tube wells in the current financial year. For the improvement of portable water supply system in Kagratchari district, Department of Public Health Engineering are now introducing different types of water supply schemes like production tube well with pipeline, deep tube well with submersible pump, iron removal plants, gravity flow system and so on. Moreover, to overview the total water supply and sanitation scenario at Khagachui district, a survey process is going on. Improving access to water is a long-term project that needs action and commitment from local and national governments. Meanwhile, for the people of Kagarachari, traveling ever longer distances for their water, all they can do is hope. Next, we examine how the northern regions are faring in the face of a dramatically changing climate. Bordering India, this region has been hit hard by both the climate crisis and its neighbors' exploitation of the water upstream. As weather conditions become more extreme, this region is afflicted by flash flooding. During monsoon, poverty-stricken families struggle to find dry food, shelter, and safe drinking water. Roads, homes, and croplands in low-lying towns and villages become waterlogged. People are losing everything to river erosion. But in summer, everything changes. Repeated and severe droughts throughout the dry season transform the landscape into a desert. The intense food shortage this brings is known locally as monga. Occurring annually between September and November, people call the period Mora Kartik, meaning the month of death and disaster. Too little water in the rivers and less rainfall during the dry seasons mean drought is inevitable. আমরা যখন ছোট ছিলাম তখন নদীতে পানি ছিল সরোত ছিল নদী ও গভীরতা ছিল এখন নদীতে কোনো পানি নাই বন্যা হলে পানি দেখা যায় বন্যা নামি যাওয়ার পর পানি নদীতে থাকে না সরকার যদি এটিয়ে যদি খরণ করত তাহলে মাছও থাকতো আমরাও দুই চারটা মাছ মারি খেতাম All the major rivers in the region run through neighboring India making Bangladesh heavily dependent on India for the availability of water resources. These rivers are the lifeline for agriculture, 
industry, as well as for domestic water in people's homes. Dams built upstream and extreme weather events have had a huge impact on the elderly and children. People lose their crops, homes and livestock and are forced to live under the open sky. Some of them give up their ancestral land and move to other areas to build a new life. আমরা <laughs> These people urgently need a long-term plan from their government and policymakers to protect their homes, their land and their lives from the ravages of droughts and floods. Power, also known as a back swamp, a beautiful wetland ecosystem in the northeastern part of Bangladesh. It is a mosaic of wetland habitats, including rivers, streams, canals, large areas of seasonally flooded cultivated plains. During monsoon, Hawa is inundated with surface runoff water from rivers and canals, transforming it into a vast expanse of turbulent water. Flash flooding is the principal challenge in this area, devastating the agricultural sector and threatening the lives and livelihoods of local people. The flooding has multiple causes that interweave. The changing climate brings unpredictable weather conditions and the drainage system is not adequate to combat runoff from excess rainfall in the upstream hilly areas. Deforestation and haphazard road and water management infrastructure only compound the problem. Water management in the Hauer region has long been lagging behind mainstream national development. During the summer, Hauer dries up, and in the rainy season, water overwhelms the region. The water crosses the field gut, inundating the houses. Many people are left without work or income. Some people make a living by fishing, but the amount of fish in Hauer is gradually decreasing. Paddy fields are sinking, as the hilly slopes funnel the excess rainfall downward. Fish and other aquatic animals are dying due to rotting paddy and grass, another repercussion of the erratic rainfall patterns. In the last few years, the climate emergency has proved a real and deadly threat to the lives of the people who live and work in Hauer. Millions of hectares of gold crop rice in the Hauer are being submerged every year during the monsoon season due to unseasonal flooding and natural calamities. On top of this, losses have been increased by mismanagement in the water development sector. As a result, the people here have fallen into a silent famine. <laughs> Experts say adequate canals should be dug in the Hauer area. Nearby rivers should be dredged so they are better able to deal with the increased water flow that is inevitable in the face of global heating. At the same time, it is necessary to build sustainable dams that can be raised when required. 
We look to the Howard Development Board to end mismanagement and lead the way with the participation of the local people in taking urgent action to protect agriculture and vulnerable communities from devastating floods. We need a forward-thinking strategy that integrates land and water resource management and promotes a sustainable ecosystem and biodiversity. We leave now to visit the last stop on our journey through this extraordinary and diverse land. The Barind region in the northwest of Bangladesh. Once famous for food production, Barind is experiencing firsthand the impact of the climate emergency. Across the region, rising temperatures, record low levels of rainfall and drought are depriving people of drinking and agricultural water. Irrigation water is extracted for borrow paddy, a highly water-intensive crop. In summer, when drinking water is not available in most tube wells, the problem is at its most severe. Sometimes people have to run from village to village in search of drinking water. Most of the Barind region is irrigated with groundwater. The water that is being taken is not being replenished, meaning that during the dry season, tube wells are depleted, leaving communities without safe water. With rain and surface water in short supply, farmers are turning to groundwater for their crops, undermining environmental efforts to reduce its usage. <laughs> According to this farmer, drawing water from underground for irrigation should be stopped first. Other possible solutions are changing from boro rice to less water-intensive crops, building water reservoirs and making ponds and creeks deeper to conserve rainwater, harvesting rainwater from the roofs of houses. The average rainfall of Bangladesh is 2,500 millimeters per year. But the average rainfall in this area is around half that. Due to the lack of water, many farmers are turning croplands into fish farming ponds and even brick fields. <laughs> The people of the Barind region are struggling with the water crisis and they are finding ways to meet the challenges. However, more effective steps are needed to resolve it. In this country, under law, everyone has the right to water. Therefore, it is the duty of the government to provide safe water for all. When water runs out, tube wells need to be installed quickly for safe drinking water. Water supply sources need to be made healthier so that every man, woman and child has access to the safe water that is fundamental to life. Bangladesh is looking forward. The future is uncertain. Here, more than anywhere, but communities in the diverse regions of this beautiful country are sharing knowledge and experiences, moving ahead with resilience and hope. <laughs>